following video is part of my practical TypeScript course. And if you wish to enroll in the full course, please navigate to Coding Addict IO. Again, the URL is Coding Addict IO, or you can utilize the link provided in the description. Okay, and once we're done with tutorial, let's put our TypeScript knowledge to a good use and create a small tasks application. As far as the setup for this project, I'm going to set my code editor and browser side by side, but you don't have to. It's just my preference since that way I don't have to switch screens like gazillion times. Also, I will set up a new page. In my case, I'm going to call this tasks HTML. Keep in mind, technically, you can build everything in index HTML. I just think that it's going to be easier if we separate the tutorial from the project. So here's what we want to do. Navigate to the root. Again, please don't set this one up in the source. We want to create a new file, and I'm going to call this tasks HTML. Now I will create a basic HTML structure. And in the VS code, essentially, we just do that by getting the exclamation point, I believe. I mean, I haven't created the straight up HTML project in so long that I already forgot. So yeah, basically, we want to click shift and backtick. And notice we get this suggestion from Emmett that create a HTML structure. Now, in my case, I'm going to call this tasks app or tasks. Then also, there's going to be a link for CSS. So that is coming up. And in here for now, let's just say tasks app. Let's save it. Now, this is totally up to you. You can navigate in the browser and just stay there. Or we can actually go to main TS. And notice we have both of these logos. Well, at the moment, these links navigate somewhere externally, basically back to TypeScript and Vite. And we can actually change this around where I'm going to go with forward slash and tasks. And of course, if you named your page differently, please make sure that the href matches. And I'll do the same for this one. So now once I click on one of them, I'm going to navigate to the tasks app. Now I'm not going to set up the link back. I don't think there's any need for it. For now, I think we can close the main one, but we will return to it. And also, let's create in a source tasks ds. So this is going to be our TypeScript file where we'll set up the logic. Let's go with ds. Now, in this case, we're not going to import that in the main ds. We actually want to go directly to tasks. Somewhere here, the bottom of the body, we want to go with script. Then we're going to add type module. And now let's look for source. We're looking for tasks, I believe. Yep, that was the file. And I always prefer to set up some log just so I don't run around like Atlas Chicken looking for a bug. But maybe there's an import wrong or something along those lines. Now, for some reason, yep, everything is fine. So I see over here the tasks. So I know that my logic works. Then let's navigate uh, back to tasks HTML. And now above the script, effectively, we want to set up the structure for the application. So I just want to add some HTML elements. Now, this is totally up to you, but I also provided some. CSS, just so it looks a bit more presentable. Now, you have two options, you can either get it from the final folder. So navigate to the final repo, look for TypeScript tutorial, and then more specifically, look for tasks CSS. So I didn't want to add this code in the main CSS file. So we're going to create a separate file for that task CSS, and then just grab that code. Or you can nicely navigate to the end of the readme and just copy this code. Again, there's a bunch of base styles. So let's not worry about the CSS too much. As far as the actual CSS for the project, there's not that much code. But I'm not going to go over it because this is definitely not a CSS course. 
So just select everything inside of the backticks where you see the CSS. Then we wanna go, I guess, let's set up in a source. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna go tasks CSS, copy and paste. And now where we have tasks HTML, we wanna set up a link. We're looking for the CSS one. And basically it's in the same, or it's not, sorry, it's not in the same folder. We're actually looking for tasks CSS. So once we add that, I mean, at the moment, most likely we won't see anything, but once we add our elements, we should have a nice CSS as well. And with this in place, now let's set up the structure. And I'm not sure whether I mentioned that technically the CSS part is optional. So, I mean, it's not gonna affect any of our logic. Our application is just gonna look tiny bit more representable. Then we wanna go with tasks, so some kind of value. As a side note, we might need to refresh. Yep, now everything works. Now I can see my tasks over here. Then let's create a form. Now we won't have the action, but I do wanna add a class. And even if you're not using my CSS, please make sure that you use the same classes. Or if you use a different class, make sure that you remember that when we are setting up the logic. Then let's go with input inside of it. The type is going to be text. Then we want to go with another class and we're going to go with form input. Let's save this, okay? This is what we should see. Then also let's add a button. Type will be equal to submit. Okay, beautiful. Let's add a class name BTN. Let's call this add task. Okay, again, I'll have to refresh. And then right after the form, we have an order list class. Let's go with list. We're not going to place any items. So we will place the items dynamically with the help of JavaScript. And then at the very end, let's just add a test button because there's something we need to discuss first. So technically, this is not going to be part of the project, but it's super important we cover two things. And therefore, we're going to go here with the button. So we're creating the good old button. Let's add a class of test BTN. And let's just write click me, let me save, let me refresh. And this is what we should see in the browser. And if you have the same result, now we can move on to the next step. Okay, and before we start typing away, let's address these two important points. First, when we use query selector, we actually get back the element, which is the most general base class that only has the methods and properties common to all kinds of elements. So that's point number one. Second, there's also potential for null. And we also need to address that. And no, we cannot build this project unless we cover both of these things extensively. Now, once we do, it should be a smooth sailing. So first, let me just showcase the two important points. If we go with cons button, we know we have access to a document, correct? Because we have the declaration files and document has this awesome method called query selector, where we just pass the class in this case, and we can select the element. And everything is awesome, but as I hover over the button, notice, it can either be an element. So it's gonna be an issue if I try to get some properties and methods that are only specific to buttons, which is actually going to be our second point. And also it can potentially be null. Now, why do we care about that? Well, let's say if I wanna go with BTN and then dot and event listener, it's not going to work. Well, technically it's going to work because TypeScript is going to fix my code, but notice it's only going to work if we go here with this question mark. So this is one approach how we could fix this because as far as TypeScript is concerned, there's no way to tell whether yes, for sure, we're getting back the button. Unfortunately, again, this is build time. This is not runtime. So TypeScript is like, okay, you're selecting the element from the DOM, potentially, well, this can be wrong, correct? 
And in that case, you're not getting back the element. You're actually getting back null. And we need to handle that. Also, don't be surprised if in few cases, and as I note, yes, we'll cover that actually when we talk about the element point, you might need to do more checking. You might need to do something like this, where you go with if button and only then run the code. So this is one approach how we can handle the case where element is no. And yes, every time you'll want to do something with the element, you'll essentially need to first check whether the element actually exists. Now, another approach to deal with the null issue is by setting up the non null assertion operator. So effectively in here, I'm telling TypeScript, yo, I know for sure that the element exists over here. And in that case, notice I can go here with BTN then dot, and then add event listener. And I don't need to use anymore the optional training. And the same is going to work if I'll try to run, for example, disabled on a button, I won't have to check for the element, whether it's actually present. So in here, I'm just telling TypeScript, listen, I know a bit more about my project than you do. And I know for sure that the element is there. And actually, if we take a look at the main TS, I believe it was over here. Now, don't worry about the code after. Essentially, they're just dynamically inserting the elements and all that. Notice this one over here, where they go with document query selector. They grab the development. They're looking for the ID over here. And then they just tell TypeScript, hey, listen, we know that the element is going to be there. Now, how do they know that? Well, if we take a look at the index HTML, notice this ID, it's app, correct? So you have two approaches. You'll see both of them used extensively. As far as your project, it really depends. If you like this approach where essentially you let TypeScript know, just be mindful if the element is not going to be there, then of course you will have runtime errors or you can use the optional chaining. And then here and there, you might need to actually check whether the element is present. So that's the first point that I wanted to address. Now, the second one is following. I use over here this non null assertion operator, okay, everything is awesome. But what if I want to run disabled method? I know that the button has this particular method. So let's say I go here with BTN dot and then I'm trying to type, but I can see that it's not present. So something is off. Why I have such issue? Well, remember, we're getting back what? We're getting back actually an element, which is the most general base class from which all elements in a document inherit. Now, this one, the element, has only the methods and properties common to all the elements. So where I'm going with this? Well, there's going to be instances where you select elements and you need a specific method or a property, which is only on that element. And this is the case, the button. I know it has disabled one and I know for sure that I definitely want to use it, but I'm not able to because I'm actually getting back the element. Now let's take a look. Why is that a case? Let's go here to type definition and notice the query selector. So query selector, surprise, surprise, is what? A generic. Now it's looking for the type and notice how there is actually type constraint where it says, yeah, you can pass in the element, but it needs to extend from the element. So this is a more interesting case for type constraint instead of our string and number are silly examples. Actually, this limits the element to the element. And not only that, notice how it actually provides this one as a default. And what does that return? It actually returns the element we pass in over here, or it returns null. So all of the things we learn 
we can now nicely use when we inspect the documentation. So now it's very easy for us to look at this documentation and be like, okay, so we do need to provide the element we want to select. It needs to extend from the element. And if we're successful, we're actually going to hit it back. So now let's navigate back. And in the query selector, we want to set up the angle brackets. And then we want to look for HTML, button, and element. So that's the one that we want to pass in. So now we're not getting back the element or null. We're actually getting back our HTML button element. So now if we start typing, notice BTN disabled, and we can nicely set it equal to true. Now, before I show you the type assertion option, which is another approach you'll see, let me just remove this non null assertion operator and showcase that here and there, you'll have to actually check for the button. So remember our second option, where every time we will use a method, for example, add event listener, we'll need to add the optional chaining, which as a side note, is already done by TypeScript in this case. In this case, in the case of disabled, it's going to be a little bit different. So if we'll try to do that, TypeScript is actually going to complain. It's going to say, hey, listen, you cannot do that. So instead, we'll have to check the button and then we can set it equal to true. Again, this just brings me back to the point that we have two options over here. And we can also always add this exclamation point. And as far as the second option, if we don't want to pass here in the generic, we can also use the type assertion. So let me just go here with disabled and let's set it equal to true again. And let me remove. Now, once I do that, TypeScript is going to complain. And another approach that you'll see is this one where we select, yes, we're getting back the element, but then we use that type assertion and we say, yeah, actually, this is going to be HTML and then button element. Now, I personally prefer the other approach. And that's why throughout the course, you'll see that one. But definitely, don't be surprised if you see something like this in the code base. This is also an option we can take where we select the element, and then we just use the type assertion. And you have the example in the readme. So I guess I can just remove pretty much everything over here, because we'll start everything from the scratch. And we'll start working with our form. So you know what, let me clean this up. We also don't need that silly button over here since we covered two important points. And now we are ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so let's start working on our project. And in this video, I want to select three elements. I want to select the form. I want to select the form input as well as the list. So form input is where we'll get the value. We'll add the event listener on the form. So every time we submit the form, we will grab the input value. And also, we want to get the list, since every time we'll provide here a task, if the value is there, then we'll basically add it to our list. And also, this is where TypeScript is going to come into play, we'll need to set up our type. So this is something interesting every time you work on a TypeScript project. Yeah, pretty much one of the first things you will want to do is to start at least setting up the shape of your data. This is, at least in my opinion, biggest differences between the regular project and a TypeScript one. You'll always, always have the types or interfaces somewhere because TypeScript needs to know about the shape of your data. So let's start, I guess, by selecting all three of them. I'm going to go with task form. Now, I'm not going to use the non null assertion operator throughout the project, I'm just going to use that optional chaining. So we're going to go here with document, then query selector, I do want to set up the angle brackets. And I'm just going to say that this will be a HTML form element or no. Then let's go with the class, and we're looking for the form. And I believe I forgot to mention, you see, 
there's no way for TypeScript to know that this definitely is a form. That's why we need to provide over here this form element. So it cannot magically go to the HTML and figure out that since we're using the form class, then for sure we're selecting the element, which is actually a form. That's why we get back this generic element, and that's why we need to use the generic to provide what is the element we're actually selecting. Hopefully that is clear. So const form input is going to be the next one. We're going to go with document query selector. Then we'll provide the HTML input element. So this is the element I'm looking for. Input element. Okay, good. And then the class is dot and then form input. Now, I think I can make this one. So everything is in one line. I'm pretty sure we can see everything that's happening. I mean, you know what? No, let me make it like this. And then also let's go with const task list element. And this one will be equal to document then query selector. Let me add the angle brackets as far as the class, we're looking for a list. And over here, we want HTML, UL and list element. And my apologies, I'm just going to be kind of randomly moving this stuff over here. Don't worry, we shouldn't have issues with the later code It's just these select lines. Then let's create the type. And effectively, we'll have a task with description, which is going to be a string and is completed, which is going to be a Boolean. So let's set up this one type task. Then let's go with the description, set it equal to a string. And yes, as a sign out, you can set this one up as interface as well. It's just my preference to go with type aliases, and we're going to go with Boolean. And then I'm going to set up an array of tasks. So this is where we'll store the tasks. And as a side note, eventually we'll grab these tasks from the local storage as well. So think of this as the state for our application. So we're just going to go with tasks. It's actually going to be equal to an array of tasks. And for now, it's just going to be empty array. Okay, and now let's start setting up the functionality. So we want to add event listener on a form we're going to be listening for submit events. We do want to prevent a default. So we want to handle everything with JavaScript. And after that, inside of the callback function, we want to grab the form input value. If some value is provided, we'll actually wipe everything clean and return. And of course, before that, we'll have to do quite a bit of logic. And if there is no value, then we'll just set up the alert. So let's set everything up. We're looking for task form. Again, we can rely on TypeScript or we can manually add this optional chaining operator ourselves. Then we're looking for add event listener. Like I said, we're looking for submit. And again, notice how helpful TypeScript is. So right away provides all the possible events that we can use over here. For now, we will provide callback directly. But in the following video, I'll show you the gotcha we need to be aware of. Remember, we have access to the event. Now, if we hover over, we can see that actually it has a type of submit event, something important we need to keep in mind. And then let's go with event. We're looking for prevent default. And we just invoke it. So now we'll handle everything with JavaScript. After that, let's grab the form input. And more specifically, we're looking for the value property, which again is on the form input. I'm going to give it a name of task description. Let's set it equal to form input. Same deal. We don't have this non null assertion operator. So again, we can just rely, I guess, on TypeScript, or in this case, it simply complains. So we'll just need to add this optional chaining. So now we're grabbing the form input value if we have something in there, if the user has 
provided something. Then we'll do a list of things. If not, then go with alert and we'll just say, please enter a task description. Again, it's not going to be the most complex application ever. Let me refresh and notice if I don't provide anything. Essentially, I just get this alert box. Now, if we're successful, again, there's going to be a list of things that we will do. But once we're done adding a task to the list, once we're done rendering the tasks and updating the local storage, at the very end, regardless, we want to set the form input value back to an empty string and we want to return. Since I only want to hit this alert if no value has been provided. Now, also for time being, you know what? Let's just log here. Let's just say task description. So if I provide some random value, check it out. I have it here in the console. If not, again, we have this alert box. And with this in place, now we can move on to the next task. Okay, and before we set up the logic to add new task to our list, let me showcase the event object gotcha. And as you know, this is something you'll also see in React section of the course. So pretty much the main idea is going to be exactly the same, and it is following. You see, if we provide over here callback function directly, everything is awesome. TypeScript knows that, yeah, it's actually a submit event, but it's not going to be the case if we set up the reference. So we can go here with function, create task. As a side note, I don't think I'm going to keep it. So I'll just set it up and eventually remove it. But this is totally up to you. Of course, you can also keep this code. If we're going to go over here and basically take all of this logic, like so, everything should work, correct? We have access to the event, and now we can just replace it. Well, let's see. Let's go with create task and check it out. So TypeScript essentially is saying that event right now has the type of any. So this is the case where if we're setting up functions, and providing them as references here when we're listening for events, then yes, we'll explicitly need to provide what is the type. So in this case, we're looking for submit event. And once we do that, again, our logic is going to work. I can provide some value over here and everything is awesome. And the same is gonna work with the empty value. And yes, the same you'll have to do in React. Now, in there, the code is going to be more complex, but the idea is the same. If you're listening for some kind of event and you set up the logic directly in a callback function, yes, event will have that correct type straight out of the box. But if you're setting up a function which you're then using as a reference, it's not going to be the case. Something important to remember. Okay, and up next, let's see how we can add task to our list. Now, in this video, we're not going to set up the logic to render any tasks on a screen that is coming up. So most likely we'll do right after we are able to add task to our list. And in here, I want to first create a function, I'm going to call this add task. And as far as the parameter, it's going to be a task, but this is where we set up the type. So we definitely say that we need to provide the task and we're not going to return anything from this function. And as far as the logic, we want to go with task, I'm sorry, tasks, and then push. And we want to add our task. So whatever we provide over here, then we want to navigate back to our if block. And you know what, let's add three comments. We'll say add task to list. Then second one will be render tasks, and then we also want to update the local storage. So all of that is coming up for now. Inside of the if block, I want to construct a task. So if I have a text, I want to go with const task is equal again to my type, my task type. And I want to set it equal to description. This will be equal to task description. So this will be my string. 
And then as far as the completed one, we will hard code. So go with is completed and we'll always, always set it equal to false. So once we create the task, now we can invoke add task and pass in a task. And since I have the correct type, everything is good. TypeScript is not complaining and we can actually log the tasks here. So let's go here with tasks. Let's add something. So let's say first task and check it out. Now I have my array with my first task. If I go with second task, it's not going to be surprised if we have two items in the array. And with this in place, now we can move on to the next step. Okay, and up next, let's render the task on the screen. Now we will call actually render task in two places. So for now, we'll only call it here in a task description block. So if we're successful, we'll just render it on a screen. But also, once we're able to grab the tasks from the local storage, we'll iterate over and render all the tasks on a screen. So think of it this way. Not only we want to render the task once we add new one to the list, but also when the user first navigates to the page or we refresh, we want to grab the tasks from the local storage where they are nicely saved and we want to render them on the screen. As far as the function, first we just set up our keyword. I'm going to call this render task. And again, it's looking for a parameter, but the parameter has a specific type and it's equal to task. Then inside of the function, first, I want to create the element. And in order to do that, I need to come up with a name. In my case, I'm going to call this task element. Then we go with our document. It has a method of create element. And we just need to provide what element we want to create. So either we scroll down or we just type li, and now we successfully create the list element. Then we also want to add the text content. Basically, it's going to be the value for our task description. The property is text content and we set it equal to task. So whatever is passed in and description. And then at the very end, remember we have our list somewhere here. That's the one. If it exists, if it's not null, then we want to add this element to the list. So we go with task list element append child again typescript auto formats for us and just as this optional chaining and then we pass in our task element so now let's navigate up where we have render tasks and we want to go here with this function pass in the task and now let's try it out if we're successful we should see the task on the screen so let's again go with first task and check it out we successfully created the element on the fly. Same is going to be with second task and all the tasks we add to the list. All right, and I think we are at the point where we can add local storage to our project because it's nice that we can render all the tasks we add to our array. However, if we navigate away or just refresh, notice how essentially we lose all the tasks since they're just saved in the memory. Now, before we do anything, I actually want to make sure I have nothing in a local storage. Otherwise, I mean, I might get some weird bugs. So let me navigate to my local storage and just clean everything. Again, let me refresh. I have nothing in there. So now again, I can make this one smaller. And as I said, I'm looking for the console. Okay, good. And now as far as the functionality, we want to create a function called update storage. And in there, we will use the local storage, more specifically set item method, and we'll need to provide the value and just stringify our current tasks. So in my case, I'm gonna do it over here. So we go with function, let's call this update storage. And as I said, yes, we'll call it in multiple places. So update storage, as far as the parameters, well, we're not gonna pass anything in. And as far as the functionality, we're just going to go with local storage. Then let's go with set item. As far as mining, it's going to be tasks, then comma. And then we're going to stringify the tasks. 
as a side note, yes, pretty much every time we will add the task to our list or when we click on the checkbox and we edit the task, when we set it equal to completed or we uncheck that, yes, effectively we will overwrite all of the values that we have in the local storage with this new one. So we'll grab this tasks and overwrite with the current values. Now, when do we want to call it? Well, for starters, we want to do it over here. So we're going to go with update storage. Let's invoke that. And you know what? I will actually open up a bigger window. I think it's going to be easier to see. So that's my tasks. Let me open up the application. Okay, good. And then let's go with first task again. Yep. This is what we have over here. Notice tasks. And I have a DRA. And if I'm going to go with second task, now this is going to get added to the array. So this should cover when we add the task to the array. So this should cover the form submission. Now we also want to handle when we load the page. So at the moment, we always set it equal to an empty array, but we want to change that. And in order to do that, we will come up with a function called load tasks. Now you can set it up with all of the functions, but I'm just going to do it over here. Since in my opinion, it's going to be easier to see the entire functionality. We are looking for a return. And from this function, we want to return an array of tasks. So an array and type is going to be the task. Now inside of the function, first let's grab the tasks from the local storage. So we're going to set it equal to stored tasks. That is equal to local, or I'm sorry, not load, local storage. It has a method of get item, and we're looking for the tasks. Now here's the kicker. Just like previously, this can be a null, and we definitely need to handle that. So in here, when we set up the return, we're not just going to go with stored tasks. Actually, we will set up optional chaining and we'll say, hey, if there's a value, okay, awesome, parse it. So we're going to go with stored tasks because keep in mind, we cannot store essentially objects in a local storage. We can only store strings. That's why we went with JSON stringify. And now we want to parse that value, but we only want to parse it if we get something back, correct? If not, well, then we'll just return empty array. And now where we have the tasks, we'll actually go with load tasks, we will invoke it. And since potentially now we can get some tasks from the local storage, we also want to iterate over and render the tasks. So for every task we have in the local storage in our array, we want to call render task method. So I mean, somewhere after the tasks, we want to go with the name, so tasks, then dot, we're looking for, for each and we simply can pass in the render task. Now let me showcase that. Essentially, it's pretty much the same as we have over here. So notice we can either go with tasks and for each and then pass in the callback function or you simply provide the reference to render tasks. And now let me navigate to the browser. And if everything is correct, whatever tasks we have in local storage, once we refresh, we'll see them in the browser as well. All right. And at the end of the project, let's also add the checkbox to our list item. And Every time we click on checkbox, we'll be able to control this is completed. So by default, it's false. But then once we click on a checkbox, we can actually toggle that. And I think I'll try to cover the part eight and part nine in this video. Hopefully it's not going to be too long. For starters, we want to navigate to render task. And at the moment, we're just adding the list item to our list. But we also want to add a checkbox to the item and then add that item to the list. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go here with checkbox. We have const task checkbox. That will be my variable. We're looking for document then dot. And we want to create the element. And this is going to be the input. 
So not list item, we're looking for the input, and then we'll set the type to be equal to a text box. So we're looking for a task checkbox type, and we set it equal to checkbox. Then let's set checked equal to is completed. Again, by default, it's going to be false. So let's go with task checkbox. We have the checked property, which controls that. And we want to set it equal to task and then is completed. And now before we add task element to our list, we also want to go with task element. So task element, then append child, and we want to pass in task checkbox. And check it out. Now we have the checkbox. At the moment it's not doing anything since we don't have any functionality, but we'll change that. Right after we create the checkbox, I also want to add the event listener. And the event we're going to be listening for is going to be change. So before we add it to a task element, let's call toggle checkbox. We're looking for our task checkbox. That's the element, then add event listener. We're going to be listening for change event. We're not going to access the event. And as far as the functionality, we want to go with task and then is completed, set it to the opposite, since we're going to be toggling. And the way we do that is following. So we go with exclamation point and task is completed. So we set it equal to the opposite. And then we call update storage. So now once I click, and you know what, let me showcase that on the big screen. Again, let me start from the scratch, just so you don't think that I'm cheating over here. And if we take a look at the tasks, okay, this is what we have is completed is equal to false. But then once I click, notice it's set equal to true. So when I refresh, I get back the same result. This concludes the tasks project. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And up next, we're gonna take a look how we can use TypeScript in React.